Everything you need to answer these questions well is hidden in the question for you, if you remember the correct way to approach them. So the first thing you should be doing is reminding yourself for each bullet point that you need five details and about two developments. If you have time, you can add in more developments, but some people struggle to get through to the end of the extract if they try to develop every single point in detail. You can't develop your way out of having insufficient detail. The foundation of the answer is having five details per bullet point. So when you walk in the exam, put five times DT, two times DV, details, developments per bullet point. That is the most important thing, first of all. Then you want to write down VARP, voice, audience, realistic words, and purpose, and set about finding those in how the question has been worded. Remember the examiner's report said that too many people didn't write in an appropriate style for the given task. So they don't keep it a secret, but they don't spell it out for you either. You have to find who you're being asked to write as, who you're supposed to write to, what the tone or realistic words or register might be, and then why, what the purpose is. So here we can see that the narrator of the passage read a magazine article about Sun Ranch, which persuaded him to apply for the job as assistant grazing technician or livestock manager. We can already tell that the purpose of our piece of writing has to be persuasive because it persuaded him to apply for the job. Realistic words were, it seems it was obviously promoting life on the ranch and had an enthusiastic tone, if that's the effect that it had. Audience, the narrator we can infer, seems to be someone who was seeking beauty and challenge. So we might want to tailor the tone of the piece to somebody like that. And the voice of the original article would have been the owner of the ranch or advertiser, someone who's passionate about the place and everything that it aims at doing. So we can find the voice, audience, realistic words and purpose from the way the question has been phrased. When we know that we have to write a magazine article, which is one of the types that they can set you, first thing we need to do is use our handy mnemonic so we don't end up writing something that could just as well have been a letter or a report or a speech. It has to look like a magazine article. So we might want to make up some interviewees, use some alliteration to make it attention grabbing and interesting, the opening should make people want to sit up and read on. It should be exciting. Plenty of anecdotes to make it colourful and interesting. Subheadings can be a good way to split it up to maintain interest. First person, probably for this one, first person plural. We here at Sun Ranch believe. Avoid boring language whenever possible and keep the enthusiasm high throughout. There's no way around learning what the main features of each style of writing are. So mnemonics like this can help you to do that. The five details plus two developments per bullet point is quite a lot of things to keep track of. So you might find it helpful to color code them so that when you annotate your extract, you won't get lost. And you can also tick them off mechanically as you use them because you're not going to be getting more marks for repeating your points. So each bullet point has its own color. Note that in this past paper, as there often is, the bullet points have more than one part to them. They put and in bold here because some candidates might miss that there are two components to each bullet point. Now, you don't need to have five things for attractions and five for surroundings. You don't need five for activities and five for appeal. You just need five total for each bullet point. And don't stress about trying to get it perfectly split evenly. Two and three is fine. Mix and match. You'll also notice that the first word of each bullet point is a little bit different. Describe, explain, suggest. So this means you need to bear in mind that the tone of the writing might vary slightly from bullet point to bullet point. Some might be slightly more factual. Others might be trying to convey ideas about how the person is going to benefit from it in terms of what they'll learn, for example appealing more to this particular audience. You must use your own words. So that means that when you're annotating the extract, you want to start thinking about how you're going to avoid quoting the bits you've just highlighted. And each of the three bullet points needs to be focused on. And you need also to have about the same amount of information per bullet point. Be disciplined with that. Don't write too much for the first one and run out of time for the important later ones. 
Amazingly, a lot of answers to this would have not included a suitable headline. You can see they're trying to help you out with the magazine form with the instructions. Use a suitable headline and begin with the Sun Ranch is located. Now, if you don't begin with that instruction, then you're already off to a bad start. You are somebody who can't read the question, so you're going to be someone who's not very good at reading the extract either. So pay attention. Remember that you haven't been asked to write the advert. You're just supposed to write the article before it. So you're writing an article, not an advert. There are lots of ways to go through these. One quick way to do it is just to write out for yourself again your colour coding at the top of the extract because it's normally printed on a different page from the question. You don't want to be flipping back and forwards the whole time trying to remember what you decided. And then just choose five things that are appropriate for each one. You can see here I've gone for 3,000 metres, high up, that's my own words. The day's hard pale light, that's a nice sunset, and I'm thinking could be a good development. This shows that you can be part of something beautiful, maybe he's been craving it, living in the city. It's also near a small town, so not many people about. 30 kilometres from a town of any consequence, this means it's remote. And my development could be, you can therefore escape city life and reconnect to the natural environment. Ridges and valleys show that it's set amongst the wilderness. And then once I've got my five things for bullet point one, I do the same for two and three. Long days on horseback and barbed wire fence work, where you might want to learn to ride or how to maintain things doing manual labor. There's some winter plowing, so you won't get bored. There's seasonal variety to the work. But it's important to realize that sometimes the information you need for each bullet point might be mixed in with information for other bullet points. So it won't come in strict chronological order. So I've spotted here a useful one for number three about challenges and opportunities. You're gonna get a thick network of scabs and scars on your hands. That might be a challenge because the work could be painful. Moving towards the end of the extract, I'm remembering I want to try and cover the whole thing. I don't want to take all my points from the beginning or the middle. I want to make sure there's a good even spread across beginning, middle and end. So I can see here that the log cabin could be useful information for the daily life on the ranch. It's basic accommodation. I've also got the idea of the ranch being committed to conservation work. So I'm going to be able to help the environment. I could develop that by suggesting that this job is a very ethical one and might appeal to someone with strong environmental beliefs. You can see I've taken a lot of my information for bullet point three from towards the end of the extract. That's often going to be the case. So it's always cold, no matter how much wood you burn. There might be a bit of discomfort then. I could develop that by saying that this could be a good thing. You can prove to yourself you can survive without luxuries. You have to get your own supplies from the town. A lot of the buildings might not be as neat as you are used to. They're in disrepair. And I'm also thinking about the very end of the extract. Make a point, if you can, of choosing something right at the end, just to really make it obvious you've used the whole thing. Common sense, adaptability, and gumption. These are personal qualities that it will give you the chance to develop. And perhaps you could also suggest this might mean the person coming to work on the ranch will learn who they really are. You'll often see that there are a couple of adjectives that are dropped in to give you clues about how you might develop the extract. So here, for example, note that the phrase magazine article is very important given that you've been asked to write the magazine article. And the fact that they put hypnotic here beneath a hypnotic magazine article should set alarm bells ringing in your mind that your article should, guess what, be hypnotic. You were writing the one that he read and you're being told here it's hypnotic. So this is a massive instruction from the examiners saying, here's the kind of thing you should be writing. Now there's another one right at the end as well. Look how they planted both super important things at the end. Of the qualities listed for successful applicants, most were unremarkable, but the last three were different. I read them slowly and more than once. This means that our narrator was hit particularly hard by this list. 
common sense, adaptability and gumption. So it might mean that he thinks that he's really got those things. It also might mean that he's thinking, I really want to develop those things. Give me the chance. Let me find out whether I've got what it takes. So at the end then, be alert to important details that might give you an instruction about what you need to focus on. So the Hypnotic Magazine article and the fact that he read them slowly and more than once. Remember, it's important to realise that you're not writing a job advert. You're writing the magazine article that comes before the job advert. But you can still use the fact that the advert listed common sense, adaptability and gumption as important qualities. Because that tells you that what you write in your article should show that life on the ranch requires these. The examiner's report for this paper is revealing and it shows you what people struggled with and therefore what you need to look out for <coughs> with questions of this type. So we've got the idea of the voice and then the style of writing as well. Avoid recreating the passage as it's written. They want you to transform it into something else. The most convincing responses to question one took into careful account that the <coughs> article was described in the passage as hypnotic and devised a headline which both reflected the persuasive nature of the piece and interpreted or evaluated the appeal. This is very important because often they'll put adjectives in that are clues about how you are supposed to develop the passage. Pay careful attention to them. So that headline needs to have some careful thought put into it. So manipulate facts. Implicit ideas are those that aren't stated obviously. Read between the lines, use your imagination. They maintain throughout a sense of audience and purpose. So you can't come out of character. Not all responses included in the headline, and some wrote an advertisement for the position, which was not in the form of an article. Whoops. So they didn't plan their VARP carefully. The best answers were aware of subtleties in the text and used them when reworking the material. But the less successful ones were too simple and factual and missed opportunities to go further. This is why it's very important when you're planning that after you've got your five details per bullet point, making sure they're all specific and different from each other, you add in about two developments. So we want to avoid drifting away from the evidence in the text. Focus on keeping the details realistic. Reworking details is something that stronger answers tend to do. When you do find negatives, it's okay to rework or reframe them given what your VARP is. Those who attempted to simply paraphrase the passage in chronological order rather than identify and then use relevant ideas and details to address the task were less likely to produce convincing, well-crafted articles. So note the difference between being just chronological and then being well-crafted. So you don't have to stick to the order of the details that you find them in. Make sure that you can rework potential negatives. That's been emphasised throughout, hasn't it? Where the overall sense of the text and task had been lost, own words substituted on a case-by-case -case basis for those of the original often lacked precision and diluted evidence of close reading. So your own words must show <coughs> precision and close reading. This is on one level a comprehension test. So don't reproduce the original. Successful responses were often those where ideas and useful details had been planned beforehand in the candidate's own words. Big tip there. Careful lists with own words <coughs> included in the plan. Using the bullets as a reference to help identify areas of focus and then a route through the answer decided. <coughs> so the bullet points are there to help you. Make sure you use them. Interpret descriptions in the text to follow the order of the bullets. In less good responses, details were included, but their significance was not made clear by any development. Look at the stronger candidates making themselves stand out by having developments throughout the answer, at least a couple per paragraph. Some weaker responses did not include many relevant or accurate details from the passage at all, making only general, if enthusiastically repeated, comments about the beauty of the area and the idyllic surroundings. So one of the best ways to avoid writing a really weak answer is to make sure that you have many relevant and accurate details and to avoid 
repeating them. So avoid repeating them. Make sure you have different points all the time. So we've got specific relevant details developed and interpreted for purpose. That's the task in a nutshell. What did the best responses do? But distill the essence, don't resort to repetition. Keep the sense of the picture in mind. Some responses missed opportunities to develop ideas in the first bullet. Look how often they're stressing this. Missed opportunities to develop. Keep it precise then. You can't just show off your word choices if it doesn't fit the VARP. Whilst range is a positive, when the vocab employed is appropriate, answers which relied on repeating partially understood vocab or set phrases could be awkward and lack clarity. Remember this is on one level a comprehension test. Show that you understand what the words in the passage mean by choosing precise alternatives when you put them into your own words. Mid-range answers, missed opportunities to extend and develop ideas in the second bullet particularly. Look how the strong candidates are all the ones who are doing the developing. The weaker ones aren't developing. The worst ones haven't even got the detail. Remember the house picture of how to do the answer? Detail first, then develop, but then make sure you stay in character the whole way through. If you strip those layers back, you just get worse and worse until at the end, you haven't even got a house at all. You've got no foundation there. Make sure you don't quote. Again, missing development opportunities. When you are mentioning anything, are you really capitalizing on the detail? The good ones focus on what is implied. The ones that are more straightforward and did worse just focused on what was stated. Look again how they're not taking the opportunity to suggest or explain. So it's about taking opportunities that the words in the extract provide you with. Some responses missed opportunities throughout. That is what the examiners are hammering away at in this report. Avoid general comments. Everything has to be linked to ideas or details in the passage. Forgetting the task was assessing their own reading skills, a number of responses drifted away from the evidence in the text, particularly in the third bullet. So we don't want to have any detail at odds with the passage. That shows you don't understand the VARP at all. A few responses did not consider sufficiently carefully the purpose or form of the article. Remember, VARP. So we don't want to just be lifting. We don't want to be basically writing the same thing. To get an idea of the style of writing that might be appropriate for this magazine article about life on Sun Ranch, let's have a look at this piece by Ian Henderson, who actually went on holiday at one of these ranches. Imagine you're a 12 year old girl. Ponies and clothes are your favorite things. You've just been shopping and you're wearing your new cowboy boots, new jeans, a blue check shirt and a real cowboy hat. You've had breakfast, blueberry pancakes with crispy bacon, just the way you like them. And now you're walking across a sunlit meadow filled with gently grazing ponies. You're feeling pretty good. Tall cowboy with a slow drool asks if you care to help him round up the ponies into the corral. So you say yes, as casually as you can. The ponies neigh and toss their manes, kicking up dust and jostling as you lean over the wooden rails to share your apple with a fine chestnut quarter horse called Rudy. You lead him into the yard, feed him and groom him, saddle him up and get ready to go for a ride in the mountains. If you imagine it properly, you're about as happy as a 12 year old girl can be. <coughs> so the opening then is very much heavily focused on anecdote, imagery, excitement, grabbing the tension. We've got some quite short, punchy sentences, especially the first one. The title or header, Cowboy Fantasies, also captures the tone of the writing. And we've even got the reader being involved directly. Imagine you're, you've just been, you've had breakfast. So there's a directness to it that's pulling the reader in. I'd taken my daughter to the ranch at Rock Creek, a 6,000 acre spread in Montana, which opened to guests last year and may well be the ultimate place to live out those cowboy dreams, whatever your age. So the language here, ultimate dreams is consistently enthusiastic. That was certainly the intention of Jim Manley, a New York financier who bought it after a 40 year search for a pristine stretch of wilderness with a river native forests, elk and deer, but no grizzlies or rattlesnakes. Pristine goes well with ultimate and dreams. He wanted somewhere he could hike, ride and shoot. Somewhere he could encourage others to adopt the frontier spirit while making sure they didn't miss any of the comforts of modern life. So the language like frontier spirit is also selling the place. 
as I settled into a proper Western style saddle and rode out beside my daughter across Rock Creek, it was as clear as the rushing river water. He had done a pretty good job. So throughout, we're appealing to the five senses in a way that is vivid and dramatic, as clear as the rushing river water. We followed the trail out past the cottonwoods and alders along the river before heading uphill towards the high forests that faded to the pint the range in the distance. In the thin mountain air, the ranch is 5,500 foot above sea level, a faint tang of wood smoke drifting across the valley from a forest fire 20 miles away it tickled our throats. The only sounds were the crickets, the creaking of our saddles and the whispering of our ponies' hooves among the summer scorched grasses. So note that he doesn't spell out directly, it was beautiful. Instead, we've just got details that hint at that. So the description is accurate, but also <coughs> evocative. We were glad of our wide brim hats until we reached the shade of the pine woods, where our ponies patiently picked their way among rocks and fallen tree trunks with just an occasional touch of the reins to keep them moving in the right direction. Now, this paragraph is really useful because it gets you thinking about what the ideas lurking in the background of this experience might be. This is big, empty country where much of the American cultural identity was forged by tough, no-nonsense pioneers. Explorers such as Lewis and Clark, the first white men through Montana, and mountain men such as Livereat and Johnson, who waged war single-handed against the Crow Indians and won. Tom McCoons, the senior wrangler at the ranch, straight up the pages of Lonesome Dove, told us tales of grit and grizzly bears by a mountain stream as we ate our lunchtime sandwiches wrapped in red and white checked handkerchiefs. So details like grit and grizzly bears, the alliteration makes it a nice punchy phrase that keeps the article lively. Together, we tracked elk, found where a brown bear had been hunting for food and trailed a bobcat away from a kill. We can tell this isn't a boring letter or a report. It sounds like a magazine article. Make yours sound the same. Some other ideas you might use for inspiration are these. This is from an article on how to build physical and mental toughness, someone reflecting on their childhood. We might use some of this language to appeal to the narrator. As a little boy, I was scrawny, weak and prone to illness. For a long time, I thought I was just doomed to be pathetic until my dad took me canoeing. In the mucky, hot, poorly maintained trails and portages, I learned I could be tough, scrappy and indomitable. Look at the list of three and the contrasts. I took a brutal pleasure in carrying the heaviest pack I could over long and steep portages, willing my toothpick legs to take one step, then another, then another, until I saw the blue expanse of the next lake peeking through the trees. That was all I had to work with. A willingness to push myself harder than anyone else, to charge headlong into the roughest terrain, and to ignore cold, rain, heat, bugs, and my own internal discomfort. So that's a way in which you can make the tone of a piece of writing sound enthusiastic and positive, even though you are listing things that might seem quite off-putting and unpleasant. You might also want to use some ideas from this list. How can you become mentally tough? How could you turn some of the hard things about life on the ranch into good things? Well, maybe you could talk about learning how to eat the elephant. Whatever's toughest, break it up. You can survive one bit at a time. Perhaps something about the mental discipline of knowing you can get through the day. Maybe you're going to sometimes feel overwhelmed and like you can't cope. Well, regroup, focus, you'll be able to. You've also got the idea of not overreacting to external events. Perhaps that's something our narrator could learn in life on the ranch. Taking the small victories and focusing on step-by-step -step successes. And maybe towards the end, you might have something about finding a truly meaningful way of connecting to the world and other people around you. So think what the overall tone of your piece is going to be and how you can keep that consistent throughout. Let's have a look at an example of a student's work and think what we could improve. This is dealing with the end of the answer, the end of the extract. This lifestyle does present some physical challenges, but rounds out one's personality in this way, among others. Be a bit more specific there. Rounds out one's personality in this way, among others. So we know what he means there. So the physical challenges can be a good thing because they can help develop you. But just saying among others, 
it isn't taking the opportunity to develop that detail. So you want to say much more there, two or three sentences. This job is heavily based on the use of one's hands, for example, mending wire cattle barriers or pulling on the rein of your steed, leaving one with cuts and scabs. Avoid quoting. This, however, leads to tougher hands and also a tougher personality. Nice link there between tough hands and tougher personality. You will learn to come back to the simplistic lifestyle we all once used to lead and to realise that you can, in fact, separate yourself from the so-called necessities to our modern age. So that's a nice development there. Detail, then development. The only mentionable negative aspect of this opportunity is that from time to time, you may be required to fire a bullet with the intention to kill. While you may not want to release this animalistic side of yourself, in doing so, you will be protecting the cattle you'll have come to love and will realise the fragility of the nature you will form such a strong bond with. So trying to turn negatives into positives, that's good for the VARP. Sun Ranch is extremely dedicated to the preservation of its surroundings, and due to this, you will live in a rustic log-built cabin. It's a nice use of rustic. Despite a few cold nights, this will enrich your experience and remind you how every day you are helping to protect this beautiful place. Note how there's a detail here that's expressing the fact that Sun Ranch is committed to conservation works. It's dedicated to the preservation of its surroundings. But the development here isn't very precise and it isn't very realistic, given the fact we're trying to write a hypnotic magazine article. Despite a few cold nights, this will enrich your experience. We're not told how, nor are we told why anybody might care. We're also not told how or why it's going to remind us how every day we're working to help protect this beautiful place. We look forward to meeting all you hopeful applicants and are looking forward to giving you the best chance to experience Sun Ridge's beauty, challenges and opportunities to build your character. This is where he goes most obviously astray because you haven't actually been asked to write an advert. The advert came at the bottom of the article that he read. So the instruction wasn't write the advert at the bottom of the article. It was write the article that came before the advert. So here, by directly trying to spell out, I am writing a job advertisement, he's shown that he's drifted away from the VARP. Also, thinking about how long these sentences are and the kind of language used, it could be a little bit more realistic in magazine style. So make it punchier, use some alliteration, use some more contrasts, vary sentence length more. But above all, you haven't been asked to write a job advertisement. You've written an article that is inspiring and comes before the advert. So he here has written the advert instead and drifted away from the actual task he's been set. Remember as well that the examiners put adjectives into the extract that you're supposed to spot because they give you clues about what you might want to include in the piece of writing you have to turn the extract into. This candidate hasn't paid sufficient attention to the fact that the magazine article was described as being hypnotic. So the actual language they've written isn't evocative enough. Find those clue words and think about how you can use them to help you get more marks. This paragraph does have five details. Physical challenges, working with your hands, living a simple lifestyle, needing to fire a bullet, and also conserving the environment. But the developments, although there are some, aren't particularly strong. The first one is a bit vague, it lacks specificity, and it doesn't fully match the VARP. The next one, just having a tougher personality, is dropped in, but again, not really matching the VARP, and we're not told exactly the respect in which the personality is going to become tougher. Why somebody might want to separate himself from the so-called necessities in the modern age isn't made clear or appealing. More needs to be said to capture the mood and ethos of Sun Ranch in its pursuit of a simplistic lifestyle. It's absolutely essential that you fully understand that developments are like analysing quotations in normal essays. You have to start by showing a clear, precise understanding of the words of the detail that you are using. Then you have to think about implicit meanings, digging beneath the surface, reading between the lines, using your imagination. You might also want to think about making links between details 
so you are aware of what we saw earlier in the examiner's report as the overall picture. So there should be a consistent thread running through your answer. Each detail should connect to and reinforce the others. The idea that you're going to realize the fragility of nature is an interesting one, but again, it could have been made more hypnotic, could have been made more important. And this detail here, that it's dedicated to the preservation of the ranch, is lacking any clear development whatsoever. We're just told very vaguely that the fact that it's a rustic cabin will enrich your experience. Here's an example of how that paragraph could have been upgraded. The first thing is that to make a more realistic magazine style, I've used a subheading, Challenge Crafts Character. This also uses some alliteration because magazines tend to be punchy and attention grabbing like that. I've made sure I've got five details and that because I'm not trying to develop every single one in equal detail, some of them aren't given much attention, but a couple of times I make sure I really push the development to make my reading skills obvious. Life at Sun Ranch can be tough, but you can learn to be tougher. The repetition of tough and tougher here and the contrast between life and the people working on the ranch brings a nice pair of contrasts. As your hands harden, your mind will manifest new qualities of perseverance and discipline. Note here that the character traits or qualities demanded by life on the ranch are being presented as admirable. We've also got the alliteration of hands harden and mind and manifest that continues what we had with tough and tougher. No fire can overcome the freezing cabins we live in or the dilapidated outbuildings we sometimes work in. So I'm using details from the passage here. But the fire of a wholesome life with purpose and passion helps us learn to survive and even thrive without luxury. I've taken one of the details in the passage here and turned it into a metaphor to help me explore some of the ideas that are important on the ranch. This is a tactic I would highly recommend. Take a literal detail from the passage and develop it in a metaphorical way, bearing the VARP in mind. Note how I'm trying to create that hypnotic tone I was told I needed to by keeping the alliteration going and also using some rhyme as well. Purpose, passion, survive, thrive. Getting your own supplies awakens inner resources you don't even know you have. While conserving the environment, you conserve something in yourself that city life threatens. You learn who you are. Note there that a literal detail, conserving the environment, has again been developed in a more metaphorical or figurative way. So we're thinking about the conservation of personality, not just the physical surroundings. It's a good idea to get into the habit of using some very short sentences alongside longer ones, because variety is the spice of good writing. This also, in this case, suits the art very well. Look how at the end of my paragraph, I've finished with just an extra sentence or two to give a realistic conclusion to a magazine article. I've also made it very clear to the examiner that I am someone who can develop details in an appropriate and realistic way. At Sun Ranch, we believe that what's most precious in our world and ourselves is easily lost in the chaotic mess of modern life. We drain the dross off the surface. It's like panning for gold. I'm sticking to the spirit of the details of the passage here and distilling the essence. Remember that phrase from the examiner's report? Develop, <coughs> develop the images, distill the essence, and then develop them in an appropriate direction. So the idea here that we all have a bit of gold within ourselves, hidden beneath some of the mess of modern life, and we just need to sift through to find it, is an appropriate one because it expresses why Sun Ranch might be an appealing prospect and also it keeps the Wild West tone going. Note that I haven't written an advert. Instead, what I've done is write a hypnotic magazine article that might make Sun Ranch seem like an exciting place or experience for someone to go to. 
So it's like a primer for the advert to follow. It's not the advert itself. I've also been quite sparing with some developments and only really pushed a couple. You don't have time to develop every detail in equal depth, but you must make sure you have at least five specific precise details, all expressed in your own words. All your developments must also be in keeping with the details and in keeping with the overall picture you're trying to create, bearing in mind the VAR you've been given. In summary then, for these questions, you want to make sure you read the question very carefully to find the correct voice, audience, think about which realistic words you need to use and also to what purpose. So the first thing to bear in mind is VAR, voice, audience, register, purpose. As you're reading the passage, make sure you make a list of five details per bullet point so that you are able to tick these off as you are planning what you're going to say and as you write them in your answer. Each of the three bullet points needs to be given equal attention. Most people, unless they think about this very carefully when doing their work, will write quite a lot for the first paragraph, a bit less for the second, and then even less for the third because you run out of time. This is bad because the third bullet point is your chance to show off that you're a grade nine candidate who can keep going right until the end when the question gets tougher. <coughs> you don't just use material from the passage, you have to actually adapt it, making sure that you do so in an appropriate way to match the VARP that you found when you read the question carefully. There should be a deliberate sense of crafting or sequencing to your answer. You're not just repeating the same points in the same order. Repetition is a waste of time and will lose you marks. Because so many marks are available for how carefully you craft your answer to suit the VARP, leave time to check it and also to correct any punctuation or spelling mistakes. Remember, it was stressed throughout the examiner's report that the best candidates were able to extend and develop relevantly a number of the ideas they included. You don't have to develop every single detail. In fact, if you do that, you might not be able to get to the end of the answer. So just choose which ones are the most important. I think it's a good idea to make a point of developing the first and last detail in each paragraph at considerable length, because these will create a good first and final impression for the examiner in each paragraph. If you don't know what the main features for each style of writing are, then you should watch my other video because there are some mnemonics in there for each type to help you remember.